can never tell when something is level. So if this, if this video is like tilted, you have to tell me, okay? You have to, because I can't figure it out by myself. <laughs> Land. Land. One of my now all time favorite movies. How do I even discuss this movie? Welcome to the first video in a series of videos I'm calling Midnight Media. It's eight, it's eight o'clock, it's not midnight. I will be posting these videos at midnight, AEST, Australian Eastern Standard Time, on Wednesday nights, it's Thursday mornings. Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Weekly recaps of the things that I watched or listened to or anything like that. Like if it's podcasts, if it's songs, if it's books I read, I mean, just straight up, I'm probably not gonna read any books. I don't drive as much as I used to, so I don't listen to audiobooks as much as I used to or at all. <laughs> the physical act of reading is so painful to me. I ideally just want to like post more on my YouTube channel. And also, I think I talked about this in my Kathy Acker video, it's getting overwhelming to just say, oh, I'm just gonna post when an idea comes to me and I work on it for months and months and months. So instead, I really just wanna do little, little videos, hopefully about 15 minutes. My God, I've been talking for like four minutes already. And just share the media that I've either watched or enjoyed or anything like that. And I already have some ideas in mind, maybe teen vampire movies, Fright Night, Twilight, Vampire Academy. There's a video I wanna do on media that I watched in my Korean movies class. And I just like realized that I still had all that information available to me, like what movies I watched. I really wanna recap those movies and maybe I'll watch like all of them in one week and then talk about them. I really also just want to get back into the habit of watching movies as opposed to just binging YouTube. Regardless of like what YouTube I binge, I think it's kind of damaging my brain a little bit. I love YouTube and I love watching vlogs and I love, you know, binging long form video content, video essays in particular, but watching a lot of, a lot of like, YouTube videos about like what this TikToker is up to now and it's just, I don't care. Stop, stop watching it dude. Just, just be normal. Stop watching that. I'm not telling anybody else to not watch that kind of stuff because it's fun, it's interesting. But just for me personally, I'm like, it's rotting my brain. And it's like talking about the content, like analysis, criticism, constructive criticism, all that is really important, especially when you're making art. I should be watching art. You know, I should be learning how the masters do it. And with Lamb, it is a masterful piece of cinema. Uh, I just am blown away by. Let's go girls. First of all, I love this film. Second of all, there will be spoilers. And third, I am not gonna be normal about this movie. Ada is the sweetest thing ever. She's so cute. She's just so cute. This movie is deeply affecting and that's what all art should be. So there's like not a huge amount of plot in the movie. It's very placid, you know, it, it moves at a really slow pace and it's, it's just so like immersive. So it's about this uh, grief stricken couple who are still mourning the death of their daughter, Ada. They own a sheep rearing farm with a bunch of animals like horses, a dog, a cat, and of course sheep. One day they discover that this sheep has given birth to a like a sheep human hybrid and they decide to raise this lamb as their own. It evolves really slowly. From the first time we see them birthing a lamb and than to us actually seeing what the lamb looks like, what Arda looks like. I didn't count the minutes, but it's like really slow. We just see her head, which is a lamb's head, but then we get to see her like running around as a human. She's got this little hoof. <laughs> She's so sweet. So the characters are Maria and Ingvar. The movie revolves around them raising Arda. There is a character who is introduced uh, quite abruptly, actually. He's, it's quite funny. He's just dumped into the middle of the road by some shady individuals who he probably owes money to. And then he turns up on the farm and he is Piazza. Piazza, is that how you say it? Um, who is Ingvar's brother. 
So he comes along, stirs up some trouble, is kind of a fucking idiot. So annoying and I just wish he wasn't in this movie. But I understand why he is in this movie because he's the audience stand-in, right? He is the one who says um, literally what the fuck is going on when he sees Ada. He voices the opinion that some audience members would have as to like, why are you raising a lamb? Why didn't you know? Why didn't you just kill it? Why you know? Like why do you think um, a lamb can be a human? Piazza presents this very pedestrian view of like someone who doesn't get the movie, <laughs> of an audience member who does not get the movie. And I read a lot of reviews that did not get the movie. <laughs> Unsurprisingly enough, most of them were North American. I'm not saying that as a North American you can't have a view on cinema that is not from North America, but when you judge uh, a something that is clearly not from your country through the lens of movies from your own country, it's not going to work. That's why when you say oh, it wasn't scary enough, you don't get it. You don't get it. It's not meant to be scary. You know, I have not stopped thinking about this movie since I saw it maybe a month ago. And I just think about it every day. I think about how sweet Ada is, how much Maria loves her as her own daughter, how, how happy they were after Ada came into their lives. Then of course the tragedy of the ending, and I will be talking about the ending. So if you don't want to hear that, um, I don't know, click off, do whatever you want. This film is a love story. It's a love story between a family who have realized how to love each other again. You know, um, the wife and the husband, Maria and Ingva, they lived this very solitary, sad life, this very grief-filled life after losing their daughter. And then Ada comes along and it's like something to give their lives meaning and purpose. Obviously, child rearing isn't for everybody, having a kid isn't for everybody, but for this couple who longed so badly to recover from their grief, it helped to have another child in their lives. And they coped with it by creating another family member, by adding to their family. Like, I'm not going to say that they replaced um, the dead Arda with the lamb Arda, because that's not what they were doing. She can't. There's, there's absolutely no way that you can replace a dead loved one. And also Arda is like half lamb, <laughs> so she's not replacing anybody, she's she's very unique. Uh, while the characters are not always likeable, I do find them very human. Clearly Peter and Maria had a thing, um, but Pieta it wants to rekindle that relationship, that thing that they had and Maria is just not interested in it. And I think it's probably born of the idea that she was very unhappy after her daughter died and she probably turned to comfort anywhere she could find it. It's not presented in a way as like, oh, she's so evil and she's so manipulative and anything like that. She just is a woman grieving. This film is very much about Maria. It's her film. She is the one who we see most of in the film and she is the first human, human face that we see, and also the last face that we see, also. But then of course the tragedy of the ending, it made me very angry. I was, I was very upset the first time I watched it, and even the second time, I'm like sobbing my fucking dick off, thinking about like how unfair it was for Maria to lose a daughter, a husband, and then another daughter. Like, how unfair is that? I'll get to that in a second. Like, like I was saying, one of the criticisms I found of the film in reviews was that it wasn't scary enough. And it's just not meant to be scary. It's meant to be creepy and eerie. And it's meant to be very, like, psychologically damaging. <laughs> but it's not meant to be like a horror fest. I wouldn't even call it a horror film. Definitely not folk horror, which stems from um, like witchcraft and um, you know, like Midsummer and The Witch and stuff like that. I would describe it as a folk tale, you know, and I see the ending as like 
not necessarily a Grimm's fairy tale, but you know, like a fairy tale that you might tell your children. So it's not meant to be scary, it's just meant to be moving and affecting. It's an allegory for the ways that grief can really affect your life. Also the consequences of your actions. The grief in this film, the grief that Maria and Ingvar feel, permeates the film like the fog across the plains. In times of happiness the sun is shining and in times of distress it's very bleak and overcast and usually nighttime. And I honestly couldn't tell what time of day it was at any point because um, the sun sets here at 7 p.m. in summer. It is now summer and the sun is setting at 7 p.m. and I love it or I hate it. I don't know. I don't know how I feel anymore. I don't know. It's it's fucking storm season again and we're sitting here like, oh god, are we gonna lose our home again? We're on the second floor now. So we learned our lesson. So while the trailer does tease Lamb as a horror film, it doesn't deliver on that. The trailer was actually quite misleading. It's more emotional than pure horror. Like obviously people can have emotional reactions in horror films, that's usually what what films are about, but um, in this film in particular, it's just, I don't know, it's just more about the, the emotions that Maria feels in particular, like, and that what their family feels as, you know, grief and then joy and then Maria feeling grief again, the threat of Piesa coming to destroy their happiness. So I read this one uh, screen hub a review by Adrian Martin. Adrian Martin says that the film resists the folk horror label given to films like Midsummer and The Bitch and that the director himself, um, oh my god, who is the director? I should know this, this is actually so embarrassing. And I think it's entirely fair to say that this is not a folk horror film, like I said before, it's more of a folk tale. The ending is like fitting of a folk tale, it's meant to provide a warning about messing with nature, you know, Maria takes a child away from its mother, the, the sheep, and then the sheep is standing outside the window bleating for her daughter, and then Maria goes outside and shoots it and then buries it in the yard. Uh, mm. The consequences of that, of her killing the mother sheep, is that the father sheep kills the father, kills Ingvar. So the themes of nature and nurture in this film are very explicit. In the poster for it, we see Maria like kind of like looking off away from the camera, but she's holding Ada. It's mother nature and nature versus nurture in, in one image. And of course Maria being like Mary, Mary mother. I was just gonna look up what the name Maria means. Should I do that right now? I'll do that right now. Maria, 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 Maria. Oh, why? Oh, all these like, mum loves best bouncing baby names. It doesn't tell me what it means. Why aren't you telling me what it means? Uh, Maria has the connotations with the sea and is said to mean star of the sea, bitter sea, wished for child. <laughs> Diam. Maria is of Latin origin and traces its roots to the Latin word mare. You know, Ada is both human and lamb. She is born from a sheep and then she is raised as human. So she lives in this kind of like duality, this like dual world, and she represents the intersection of nature and nurture. So the film is very much about Maria and her loss and her grief which is why the ending is so horrific because it's like well when will she catch a fucking break just because she's like stepped out on her husband and that she killed a sheep and she stole stole a baby <laughs> she's still amazing okay leave her alone we stand a queen who's not afraid to go after what she wants and the last thing i just want to talk about is like the backgrounds and the nature of this film absolutely stunning. The wide open plains and the mountains and like the fog and the white sky and everything. They like perfectly capture the isolation and the loneliness of such a harsh place to live, you know, and the isolation and the loneliness that the characters feel. So not to be like, oh, the landscape is a character, but it is <laughs> in this film. It is. Sometimes things can be things. Sometimes we can say that things are things. At least that's my interpretation. 
but they're also physically isolated and lonely. Like they don't have any visitors aside from Piesa. They don't even really venture from the farm. Um, there is one scene where Maria takes Pieta to the bus just at the edge of their property you know I don't think they ever really leave the property they're so stuck in their grief and in their family of three you know to the point where Maria will destroy anything that threatens her family including Ada's mother. Beyond the farm is an unknown that is represented in the intrusion of the sheep father and Pieta. Uh, we see Maria um, underneath a white sky a couple times by my count there could be more actually but one scene is where she's um, at her daughter's grave. A third of it is the mountain so the white sky is her grief but the mountain kind of represents the earth and the the gifts that it has to bring which is Arda. Is that just so pretentious of me to, to do that? Oh that's what this shot represents. Oh my god. But it does. And then at the end we see um, Maria surrounded by white sky and that's she's truly alone because her husband has been killed, Arda has been taken by the sheep father and then she's truly alone and trapped in her grief. It's only an hour and 45 minute film. Add another 15 minutes onto it, Johansson, what's his name? Oh this is so embarrassing. Director guy, Valdemir, Valdemir Johansson. Okay, Valdemir, I'm, I'm speaking from the heart here. I'm speaking right to you. Add another 15 minutes onto this film where Maria takes the gun, tracks down the sheep father, and fucking plugs him. <laughs> For like, killing the dog. He killed the dog. He killed the father, and then he took Arda. Um, no, death penalty. Get him out of here. And then she takes Arda back home. That's what I would have liked to see. Anyway, that's my review of the film Lamb, which I loved so much. Please leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear them. Please don't leave whole essays. <laughs> I've had people leave whole essays in my comments before and it's like, you can make your own YouTube video about that. <laughs> I'll watch it, I'll watch it, it's fine. Um, but I won't stand for any lamb slander. Okay, Ada is my spiritual child. Um, she's my baby and I love her forever and ever. And every time I watch this movie, I bawl my eyes out at the end. Oh, oh my God, um, Numi, Numi Rapace, is that her name? Numi Rapace? I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. She is just phenomenal in this movie. A really, really wonderful, well done film. It's just a perfect piece of cinema. Aside from how there were 15 minutes missing of Maria going and, and killing the sheep father. Um, he was terrifying, by the way. I would like screamed the first time I watched this. That's it, uh, 35 minutes on the clock, thank God. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna try and release one of these videos every Wednesday night, um, along with my weekly, uh, my weekly live streams which are on Saturdays at 2 p.m. AEST. Um, they are called Riot Writers Club and they're just me teaching people about writing. It's just all I do. My book, Daughter of the Valley, is out. It's also about human wolf hybrids. Hopefully as psychologically damaging as this film. Hopefully you walk away going, damn, that was a good book. But if you don't, um, feel free to keep that to yourself. <laughs> no, actually, I'd love to hear what people think. If you want to rate it on Story Graph or anything like that, I would love that. That would be really cool. Um, yeah, it's for free as well. I always give my ebooks away for free. They're on my website um, for pay what you want. Uh, so if you want to support the channel, feel free to chuck a couple bucks my way. It would really help me. And also as per my last, oh my God, this is going on forever. Oh my God, why do I have so many things to plug? Um, as per my last Riot Writers Club video, I now have a Notion template that's available for you to download for free again. Check out the video, chuck a couple bucks my way if that's your thing. I'll see you next time.